Next. Next. Come on. Okay. You got that? RC circuits and graphs. Continuing with capacitors, so the capacitor is fully charged up like in a flash camera and then it's suddenly allowed to discharge, release its charge, through a resistor, like a light bulb. So you have your capacitor, it's charged up and then all the charge comes out and goes into a light bulb flash. So <laughs> I think I've drawn enough. You have your capacitor and it's charged up and then all of the current goes into a light bulb. Uh, so this has a resistance R and this has capacitance C and it has a charge and it has a voltage etc. Uh, so notice in this diagram we have a capacitor which is charged and a resistor. So the charge goes out of the capacitor into the resistor and then some work is done, you get your light. So you have a C and you have an OR together. No uh, cell, no battery. Now maybe there was a battery at the start, like here, but then you disconnect the battery and then the charge is released. So we don't care about the battery. So because we have one resistor and one capacitor, we call this circuit uh, or C circuit for one resistor and one capacitor. So at the very least, just write down what the or C stands for. It's one resistor and one capacitor. I don't know if that's actually true, but I think it's true, and it seems like it could be true. Uh, no, I don't think it's remote control, although it could be. So just write down the RC part. So RC is one resistor, one capacitor. You got that? No? no? Okay. Yeah? Okay. So let's imagine now I connect a ammeter. So I stick an ammeter here to measure the current. So here is time and then here is current measured in amps. So what shape of graph do you think I'll have? Uh, we all think it should be going down. Why? Well, just because it's running out of charge. So we imagine it's going down. But how? Yeah, it doesn't go down in a straight line. In fact, it'll curve down quickly. So if you were to look at the values here, it would curve down quickly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a graph to show you. So here we have current in milliamps and here we have time in seconds. So can you copy this table down? We're going to make a graph. <coughs> Not yet. Uh, no.
You have the table, Amanda? Great. We'll try it now. So, no surprise, we put time on the X and current on the Y. Um, here we go. Okay, so time is in seconds. Uh, what's the time? It goes from zero to ten. And then the current is in milliamps. Uh, so what's the first current? I'm doing it in milliamps, so it's 100. 70.7. Wait, what's after 25? After 25. 17.7. 17.7, yep. Yep. Uh, 8.84. Yep. 8.25. Uh, 4.22. 3.30. 3.30. 13. Team. Uh, team. Team. Okay. Right. So let's have a look here at the graph. Insert. Chart. Scatter. That one. Uh, current against time and then the x-axis is time in seconds and then current in milliamps and you see this is the graph so the current nicely smoothly decreases uh, why is zero second a power? why is zero second? Because that's when the power is found in the capacitor. Zero, yeah, by time zero, that's when the ammeter first registers the current passing through it. Okay. So, like, really, this graph is probably more like no current, no current, no current, and then you press the flash button and release the current, so it goes no, 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 shoots up, and then curves down. Uh, you don't have to draw it as neatly as this, but can you at least get the kind of general shape and the numbers here? getting hungry. I'm thinking maybe I need brownie and coffee. Uh -huh. Well brownie is a bit sweet. Yeah, but that's good. Mm. No, too much chocolate. No, never too much chocolate, never. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. Oh, uh, chocolate and brownie close together. No, no, that's too much chocolate. Yeah. Uh, coffee and brownie ah. close together. Okay, you got this graph? Yes. Do you know the name of this shape from your math class? Uh, it's not linear, right? Is yeah. this linear? Yeah. No, definitely not. Is it quadratic? Yes. No. no. Well, it's not really. Pretty much until I keep continuing. But it doesn't go back up. So it's not linear, it's not quadratic, it's not cubic. No. No, stop saying things. Um, <laughs> what is this? Ah, right. Yeah, what's it called? 
What's the adjective? <laughs> Exponential. <laughs> Have you heard this word? Yeah. Are you sure you've heard it? Yeah. Did you say yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that okay, yeah, that's great. So did you hear it in math class? No. 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 <laughs> Are you <laughs> sure? That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't even matter. All right. Um, so the, as you can see, this graph is exponentially decreasing. Actually, maybe you want to write that word down since you didn't know it. Exponentially. Oh yes, we'll get to the formulas, yeah. So, if the graph is uh, increased, it's exponentially? Exponentially increased? Yep, yep. Say it again, Amanda. Exponentially. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Increase. Yes, increase them. Well, she was asking me, is it the same word if it's increasing? And it is. Okay. So, uh, which is not a surprise. I mean, everybody thought the graph should decrease. Uh, and in fact, the formula is going to be written in this form. So you know from math class... Oh, wait, sorry. You should know, if you were listening in math class, uh, that these graphs are like this. If the graph is going down and it starts from the top, that means the A is positive and the B is negative, if it's this shape. Okay? So in physics, when we have a graph like this with time and current, a similar idea, we say I equals I0. What do you think I0 means? No. The maximum charge at the start. The charge at the start. I zero. And then here the power should be minus, so we have minus. And T is like the X. But I don't write a B here. Instead I write this different constant called one over time constant. Now I'll explain this in a minute, so just don't panic about this. Now, if you if you can't see this, it's like this. Look, one over that. Yes, it's tau. There's the formula. There's the formula. What? What's the tau tau? I forget. What is it? <laughs> this one? Is it something dirty? No. no. It's a person. It's a oh, person. The, the Chinese boy. Yeah. Everybody people. likes. Yeah, <laughs> Tao Tao. <laughs> I, are you knocking too? Yeah. Okay, yeah. The first day we were on the stage, we were in the same car that brought us to school. Huh? Yeah, you were in the same that. car as Tao Tao? Yeah. You know him? I know nothing. I know nothing about him. <laughs> okay. Uh, when when you, when you go to business class, um, ask Angelina how Toto is. Okay. okay. <laughs> I will actually. Okay. How Toto is. Okay. Uh, so this is the shape of the graph. Um. Okay. So can you just write down this formula here? Oh. Right. Look, I'm missing the minus and the power here. There should be a minus in there. Minus. Yeah, minus one over tau tau. Yeah. Uh, multiply time. Uh, yeah, so don't forget, please. I forgot the minus here. 
Yeah. No. Well, it's difficult to get information from a curved graph. We can see what the I0 is from the graph, the initial value, but the 1 over tau, uh, this is more difficult. The 1 over tau is like the k in y equals a e k t. So what I'm saying here is if I have if I have a linear graph, this here is what? This point here is what? This is the C. And what does the slope represent? M. The M. Now the problem is if I have a curved graph, I can see what this represents. What's this? The I0. But I have no idea what this represents. This is my problem. So in physics, we don't like our graphs to be curved. We like our graphs to be straight. All right, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go back to my table I had earlier. And I just need to uh, kill this. So instead of having current, let's see what happens if I plot log current. Okay, so here I have log of the current. Alright, so let's try and plot this if I can. Okay, so on the title is log current against time, and the x-axis is time in seconds, and the y-axis is log current, and the units are log milliamps. Now something very interesting has happened. If you plot the log of the current against the time, you get this beautiful straight line. And this is what you much rather have in physics. So I'd like you to roughly draw this graph, be, um, well, it doesn't have to be beside the other graph, but it's the same data except we have log of the current on the y-axis. So can you draw this, please? And now it's a straight line. Uh, whoops. No. rough draw to get the idea. Yeah? Okay. No, 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 no. Roughly, roughly. Okay, so these, um, these are the values from earlier, and I put in an extra row, which is the log. Yeah, you don't need to write this down, because you all, from math class, know how to calculate log on your calculator. Yeah, so for, I just would like you to check, for example, if you type in log 100, you do get 4.61. You can trust me if you don't have your calculator. Okay? So we've seen the plot. Uh, here it is here. It's a straight line. So notice how the graph is linear, which is much better. Okay, so what happens when we put log on the formula? 
let's see what happens. So you need to write this part down. Oh, I should say, uh, Grace, you were asking me earlier about if I need extra space. In the exam, sometimes they give you this table and then they ask you to complete it. So you just need to put the log of the current here. Okay. Uh, let's have a look now at the next part here. Oh wait, do you want to take a picture of this? These are just logs of currents, that's all. Right. What's wrong? Okay. So we have I equals I zero E minus one over tau T. So what do I put on the left and the right? A log and a log. So here I get log I equals log I zero plus log E minus one over time constant T. So I get log I equals log I zero minus one over time constant T. So I get log I equals minus one over time constant T plus log I zero. Now, in my graph, what do I have on the y-axis? I have log i. And what's on the x-axis? The t. So, if you compare this to y equals m x plus c. When I go back to this graph, I hope you can uh, figure out what the slope, the m, represents. What's the m here? Yeah, which is what? One, one over, minus one over time constant. And the c is log the yeah the starting current we don't so when we make the graph this is how we can know the tau so from the graph yeah minus one over the slope this proof well proof short proof this is sometimes asked in the exam I've seen it twice. Okay. No, okay. Time constant. Let me show you on the slide. Can I? exactly what it is yet. Continue? Problem? Me too. <coughs> Continue? Right.
So, uh, we have this formula which we just wrote down and you can see that the m, the slope, is 1 over the time constant and the c is log 0. If you wrote that down, you don't need to write it down again. Did you write that down from the... Yeah, so I'm saying that the slope is 1 over the tau and the c is log I zero, that's all. Uh, okay. So, what's nice is the formulas are the same for current. It's I zero minus T over time constant. It's also the same for the charge. Q zero E minus T over time constant. It's also the same for the voltage. V zero E minus T over time constant. They all decrease like this. Uh, now, what is this tau that's so important? Well, it's called the time constant, and you can find it by using this formula, which we just proved, minus 1 over the slope. But there is another way to calculate it. The other way to calculate it is that the time constant is equal to the resistance multiplied by the capacitance, or C. Capacitance. Resistance. Yeah. So you have two formulas for the time constant. Also, the other thing the time constant can tell you is that five time constants is the time to fully discharge. So what I mean is, um, here back at my graph, well, this here, when it's nearly zero, is five time constants. So the time to fully discharge is roughly five time constants. So it's not a surprise that the units are seconds. Everybody is cold except me, yeah? Nice this morning. Say again? Or, yeah, or is resistance and C is capacitance. Okay. So now that we have this new theory, let's look at um, one more question. So. Uh, yeah, just write, write down the table. Just the table, please. That's what you need right now.
Can you, the, what are the times? It goes from zero and then it goes up in tens, is it? Until a hundred. Okay, now this time is actually milliseconds. Right, and the current is milliamps, and what does it start at? A thousand? A four one? Seven zero seven five nine five five nine five five hundred four two oh four two oh three five four two nine seven two five zero two one zero and one seven seven two one zero and one seven seven so this graph I think the question says give the appropriate graph so in the exam, often they won't tell you clearly to put log current on the y and time on the x. You need to remember that when you're talking about capacitors, we often use log current. Okay? So uh, let's uh, let's make a graph uh, of time and log current. Uh, example, yeah, example one. Time in milliseconds and then log current I, I in milli. Uh, you don't have to, you just be careful with your constants. We'll take care of that in a moment. Log milliamps. Oh, yes, of course, absolutely. Uh, right, so there's the graph. Now, first thing we want to know is what is the time constant from the graph? Okay, so if I go to my graph, uh, where's it gone? Uh, here. Okay, so first we need to get the slope. So the best way to get the slope is you need to have a look at the height of the triangle and the base of the triangle. So how big is this height, roughly? Let's see, uh, about a little less than two. I'll say 1.9. And then how big is the base? Well, you can see it's exactly 100, isn't it? Okay, so I'll just write those two down. So I can see that the slope is roughly minus uh, 1.9 over 1,000. Hmm? Uh, it's a question after the graph. 
Question B. Over oh, sorry, did I write a thousand? I did. Over a hundred. It's 100. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Harim, this is why I said you have to be very careful about the units. So, the denominator is not seconds. What is it? Milliseconds. And the numerator is not amps. It's milliamps. But in fact, because they're both milli, the millis cancel and it's still the same as amp per second. So in fact, we, uh, there's no problem with the units here. So this is going to equal 0 0.019 um, amps per second. Not yet, not yet, no. I just got the slope from looking at the graph. I, I did, look, I did this one, divided by this. The y divided by the x. Yeah? You, you know this from maths, right? Okay. Uh, anyway, we don't want the slope, because the time constant is minus 1 over the slope, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that would be 1 over 0 0.019 seconds per amp. Uh, I think I'm doing something a bit wrong with my units here. Ah, uh, the minus is gone. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Hey, hey, hey. This isn't milliamps, it's log oh, yeah. milliamps. Anyway, don't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Forget about the units here for the moment. It still doesn't have a unit. No, no, this unit will have seconds. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you make a graph like this with x and y, and then if you make the graph with milli x and milli y, uh, the slopes will be the same because the millis cancel. That was the point I was badly trying to make. Okay, uh, so here I get 52.6 tray. The units would be, I believe, seconds. Or would it be, hang on, I can't see my table, just a sec. Oops. Ah. Now the unit here, I really, I really don't want to confuse you, but the unit here is what? Do you, well, let me. Maybe you actually know what is the unit here? Seconds or milliseconds? What do you think? What do you think, Sophie? Well, it's still milliseconds because in my graph, I'm using milli x and milli y but uh, my point is the slope uh, we don't have to worry about because the millis cancel but I'm still using milliseconds in my measurements no no there was a minus here and there's a minus in the formula they cancel well which graph this this graph these are milliseconds Yeah? 
Now, if the Milly thing is confusing you, and it should be because it's confusing me, you can just change everything into amps and seconds. This is what I recommend for the exam. Less likely to make a mistake. Uh, okay, so uh, I have my time constant. It's 52.63 milliseconds. Or if you want, that's zero. No, just leave it as milliseconds. Huh? Yeah, that's the V. Get the T. Now, C is how long until the capacitor fully discharges. So what's the total time? Yeah, the total time is roughly five time constants. Uh, so that's roughly 263 milliseconds. This number multiplied 5. Yeah. And lastly, what is the value of the resistor? Last part D. Uh, here, Greg. C was the total time and D is what's the value of the resistor. B was what's the time constant. Yeah, which formula, Harim? I don't know what the Time constant equals R C. So R equals time constant over C, which is 0 0.263 seconds. And the capacitor, I actually tell you in the question, it's 200 millifarads. 200 milli. See there? So this would be divided by 200. One thing is time constant is 2.63. Yeah. Yeah, that's in milliseconds. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. 0 0.05263. Is that better? Yeah. 0 0.200. So it's quite a small resistance here, 0 0.26 ohms. It's in the question. Oh, okay. See it here? Okie okay. dokie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, if you want to change these into uh, seconds and amps instead of milliseconds and milliamps, that's fine. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. There's your homework. And also, just to be extra disgusting, <laughs> I put in microvolts and milliseconds, you know, just because. Now, uh, be careful here because uh, micro and milli, they don't cancel. Yeah, yeah, or what you could do also is you could change this one here into millivolts by multiplying by a thousand milli is true, yeah. Or you could change these into microseconds, sorry, microseconds by multiplying by a thousand, or mi uh, millivolts by dividing by a thousand, or whatever. Or just convert everything into volts and seconds if you want your life to be much easier which I think is what I'll do next time when I do it. All right.